This evening, we come to the end of the six-part sermon series, A Light to the Nations. And I invite you to see the others or read the others at some point, but please receive this one for tonight. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. For months, it seemed as though they had been living in a land filled with deep darkness. Now, as light descended, the deep darkness had settled mightily on the mountains all around them. There was only darkness and silence and stillness. Times were tough. Food was scarce. They were burned out from the challenges of daily living and working. They found themselves struggling to make sense of it all. As shepherds, all they had were the stars to guide them, the ground for a bed, and a rock for pillows. Darkness and silence, stillness, engulfed them. Suddenly, the sky lit up. What had been utter darkness became pure light. And standing before them was an angel of the Lord who spoke directly to them. The angel declared hope. The angel proclaimed a savior. The angel would guide them out of the darkness into the light. And then the savior that was promised by this angel would guide them from the light to light everlasting. They were told to get up, and they were told to go. And they were sent from the barren mountains to a nearby town. Everything was changing. Blinded by the light, they headed for town. They headed to meet Jesus for the very first time. Now God was speaking then, and God is still speaking now. Nine days ago, something miraculous happened in our world. You might have missed it. But 12 hostages in Haiti walked out of captivity. Having been captive in darkness, they had been attentive in prayer. They were tuned in to the movement of God's Holy Spirit in their midst. And they say they were nudged by God to get up and move out. 12 men, women, and children got up, walked out into the darkness, and then into the light of freedom. Their escape began on the night of December 15th. Having prayed to God for a sign through the two months of their captivity and having received a sign to escape, the last 12 Christian Aid Ministries hostages quietly, with their shoes off, walked out of the place where they were captive and into the night. A spokesman for the group speaking just four days ago said, when they sensed the timing was right, they found a way to open a door that had been closed and blocked. They filed silently to the path they had chosen to follow and quickly left the place they were held, despite the fact that numerous guards were right there. Now, if you read the Bible, there are things that happen like this all the time. But in our world, I don't see it as much. They followed the stars and the constellations to freedom. That reminds me of others who did the same generations ago. Quietly they walked for 10 miles in woods and thickets through the darkness of the night and through a dangerous territory where gangs were everywhere. At dawn they found themselves, they found someone who helped them make a call and no one could believe in the authority's office that they were standing in freedom. After two months in captivity, they were free. And tonight they're all home, somewhere in the United States or in Canada. The 17 hostages originally taken captive on October 16th by the 400 Mazoo gang were Mennonites and Amish and other Anabaptist Christians. 
They come from rural communities across this country, Wisconsin, Ohio, Michigan, Tennessee, Pennsylvania, and Oregon, and Ontario. Throughout the two months they were captive, the leaders of the Christian Aid Ministries here in Ohio told us this, our sisters and brothers are going to be fine, although they were threatened with death every day. He said, God will protect them, and more important, it's important for them at this moment in time to be praying each day for their captors, and we are praying for their captors too. At a press conference on Monday, when the news of their escape was reported, the Christian Aid Ministry supporters who were there in Berlin, Ohio, began to sing in four-part a cappella harmony, Nearer My God to Thee as they honored their friends. But in essence, they were calling all of us to realize that we need to draw near to God, that that's our hope. Yesterday, I called to speak with someone at the headquarters in the ministry in Berlin, Ohio, which, as you know, is over in Holmes County, just about 100 miles from here. And when I shared with Naomi, who answered the phone, that along with my church, I'd been praying every week for the hostages and their families. She asked my name and the name of our congregation. When I answered her, she said, now we will all pray for you and for your community as we add you to our prayer list of communities to whom we feel connected through the power of prayer and for whom we feel deep gratitude and love. We are forever indebted to you because God heard your prayers. Praise God, thank you, and thanks be to God. Talk about humbling. Talk about beautiful. Talk about a Christmas gift that was given yesterday afternoon. This Christmas Eve, can you see how God is still speaking through all of these men and women and children, our neighbors just, as I said, 100 miles away from us. While there are many ways in which we practice our faith very differently than our sisters and brothers in the Christian aid ministries, tonight we are one in Christ because we're moving to the manger with them, the manger in Bethlehem, to witness these things that have taken place. Tonight, we share our love with the newborn king too. Tonight, we have been nudged by God out of the darkness to follow the light. So how is it that God is nudging you this Christmas Eve? How will you move from whatever darkness holds you into the light of Christmas? Cast in the long shadow of pandemic darkness these past 22 months, each one of us, has had to learn to seek light in new ways. We have had to learn new steps through the darkness of our lives. We've had to look each day for glimmers of light shining in the darkness, like Mary who received the shepherds as they stumbled from the darkness to the light. How are you treasuring all these words and pondering all these things in your heart? So much has changed for all of us in the past two years. We have grown so much. We have changed a lot. And we have grown to love and admire the million points of light in our nation and this world who save us every day, who are surrounding us through their mercy and grace. We have grown in our admiration and love for parents with small children who are trying to maneuver through the malaise of this madness and care with love for their children in spite of this pandemic. We have grown in our love and admiration for teachers who get up each day for all ages of children who've been cut off from friends, from family, from school, from normal socialization, and yet they rise. They get up each day and they go to teach the kids, our children, and they embrace them with love and creativity. We have grown in our love and admiration for frontline workers, for people in the healthcare field, for the police and fire who protect us in these times, for packages that are delivered by 
some new friends of mine, right? And groceries and food on our tables when we're dining out or dining in. Someone's feeding us. And they have put themselves out there to do it in a pandemic. We have grown in our love and admiration for our older family members and friends who have experienced so much isolation and so much loneliness and so much pain in this time, too much death and too much sadness. And we have grown because they have shown us how to find the light in the midst of the darkness. And I have grown in my love and admiration for each and every one of you. For you have shown me how to persevere. You have shown me how to demonstrate kindness and courage in the face of economic challenges and hard physical and mental health challenges. And you have shown me how to adapt to a new way of living and loving against all odds. Moving from darkness to light, in the spirit of Mary, I have learned to treasure all your words. And some of them were harder to treasure than others. And I have learned to ponder all these things in my heart. Darkness, stillness, and silence are seeking to continue to engulf us this night. But the word of God is pretty clear. It's very clear. The light overcomes the darkness. And God's pure light is blowing away the darkness. Our true light, our true light to all nations is shining from the stars and the constellations. And his light is blowing away the darkness from a manger, from a feed trough. If we can't change when we see that, when will we change? I pray that God will nudge you to move this night as you move from darkness to light. Amen.